guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome. If you're new here, my name is Kiana. I make lifestyle vlogs, mom content. So if you would like to see this kind of videos, then keep on watching. So today I wanted to tell you guys about my birth experience, my birth story. Um, I am eight weeks postpartum today. So yeah, I'll just get right into it. And she is right here. So if you see me looking over here, she's taking a nap. So basically her due date was December 5th. And on December 4th at night, like around 10 p.m., I started to have contractions. Um, but they were like more like mild cramping. It was like cramping, but like mild cramping, like I felt something. And so I had never had contractions before, so I didn't know that that was contractions until later on, obviously. But so I'm like, okay, like I'm not really feeling good, whatever. Um, I started to time them with the timer just in case. So I didn't eat dinner that night because I wasn't really feeling good. So then I kept timing them and then they were just like all over the place. They started to feel like, like very slightly more intense as it went on. And then we had an appointment the next day, my 40 week appointment at like one. So that night I go to bed, I'm still timing them just in case. And then around 1 a.m. I had a couple contractions, like kind of back to back. I was timing them and they were six minutes apart. So the timer that I had, it was like an app on my phone. It was saying, it was like, okay, um, pack your bags, get ready to go to the hospital. And I freaked out. So it was like 1 a.m. and I got in the shower because I'm like, oh my God, like I want to shower, whatever. So I took a shower at like one in the morning, Juan's in the bed sleeping. And so while I'm in the shower, I was like waiting for another contraction to see, like I'm just like aware of like when I'm getting it. And I hadn't got one the whole time I was in the shower. So I was like, okay. So then I kept timing them. And then it had been like 30 minutes since I had a contraction. And so I'm like, okay. So then I waited another, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. And then I had another one, but it was like, they were all over the place. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go back to bed and then whatever, we have our appointment in the morning, we'll see how this goes. So the next morning, I still am having them, but they're very random. I'll either get them, some are 10 minutes apart, some are 20 minutes apart, some are eight minutes apart. They were never consistent. They were like all over the place. So on the way to the appointment, we stopped at Starbucks and I got like a banana bread, something quick. And I get to my doctor and that was my due date. It was my four week appointment. So the 5th, December 5th. So I went in, I did an ultrasound that morning. I saw the baby, everything was good. And then I saw my doctor right after. Um, so she checks me to see how much I'm dilated. And she says that I'm like three, four centimeters dilated. And I don't remember, I wanna say, I don't remember how much effaced I was, but she was like, you guys can go home, go for like a walk and you can head to the hospital after that. And I was like, me and Juan were like, oh, this is happening. So then after that, we get our stuff together, we head home, I'm texting my mom, my family, like letting them know what's happening. And we already had our hospital bags packed, but we were just like getting them ready with any like last minute things, like phone chargers, whatever, and putting them in the car. So then, at the same time, I'm like sending videos to my dad to come watch our dog. Juan's trying to like get something to eat really quick in his system. I was so nervous that I like couldn't eat. I was like, oh my God, like this is happening. But we're getting our stuff ready, getting them in the car. And then after that, we take the dog for a quick lap around the neighborhood. And as the day was going by, my contractions were getting like more intense, like each one I had. She also, whenever she was checking my cervix, she said that she did like a little membrane sweep. I don't really know exactly what that is, but I think that kind of helps with um, either dilating or something to speed some kind of process going, basically. So, oh, Cooper, he's getting off the couch. But anyway, so that happens. We go for a quick lap around the neighborhood with the dog. And then after that, we head to the hospital. And at this point, it was like around five, I think. I go to triage. And at this point, I'm like so nervous. My contractions are getting like more and more intense. Like while we were on the walk with the dog, um, I had to like stop because they were like, they would hurt really bad. And it, 
It's hard to explain. I didn't know what to expect when it came to getting contractions because I've obviously never had them before, but it felt like kind of like sharp pains, like, like cramps, but like way more intense than cramps. I don't know how to explain it. And then you could feel a little bit in your back too. So in the car on the way to the hospital, they, my contractions were so intense and I don't know if driving in the car made it worse, but I was like holding on to everything, like all the handles, like every time I got a contraction. And in the car, I remember they were like eight to 10 minutes apart, but then they were still, I was timing them all day. They were still very sporadic. No, no consistent contractions at all. We get to the hospital, we go to triage, they check me in. They take me back to this little room in triage and take like my vitals and stuff. And she's like, are you nervous? Your blood pressure is high. And I was like, yeah, I'm about to give birth for the first time. I'm obviously nervous. So, so then after that, um, they put us back in the waiting room for like maybe like five minutes. And then they call us back to go to like another little room. And then I get undressed in like the hospital gown. And then they like put the IV in my hand. They checked me again to see how much I was dilated. And I was five centimeters at that point. And that was like maybe like at six o'clock. So my contractions were still getting more intense. Mind you, by this point, I hadn't really eaten the whole day except for that banana bread that I got at Starbucks. And then I didn't eat dinner the night before because I like wasn't feeling good. So I'm like running on E. I had like Ritz crackers in my purse. So as I'm in that room, Juan's like feeding me these crackers because I was so starving. My stomach was like eating itself. So then the midwife comes in and and her nurse or whatever come in and introduce themselves because it wasn't my doctor um that was the day that she wasn't there but i knew that ahead of time that it was a possibility she wasn't going to be there so the midwife comes in and introduces herself and then basically tells me what we're going to do she asks me about the epidural um i had always planned on getting the epidural i just didn't know what that was going to look like. Like I didn't know when I was supposed to, I didn't know anything. So I have two friends that have kids obviously. Um, so I was like in a group chat with them, texting them, asking all these things like, when am I supposed to get the epidural? Like all this stuff, like, when do you get it? And one of my friends said that she waited like hours, like two plus hours for her epidural. And so that like kind of freaked me out because my contractions in that moment, they were still manageable, but I was scared that if it took two more hours that I was just going to be in so much pain because just two hours before that, like they weren't as bad as they were. So I was thinking about getting it and I told the midwife because she asked me, when do you want to get it? And I was like, um, I want to try to wait a little bit. Like I want to try to use the medicine ball because when I was at home, I tried to use that and it helped a little bit with the pain when I was on the ball. So I was like, maybe that will help me. So so she's like, okay, great, whatever you wanna do. So then right after that, they take me to the delivery room, like where I'm gonna be giving birth. Um, so I walk in and I see the little bassinet, right? Like as soon as I walk in to the right and I was like, oh my God, like I was getting so excited because I'm like literally like I'm about to meet my baby girl and it's just so surreal. So I'm like excited, but I'm also getting nervous cause I'm like, okay, like it's, it's happening like soon. Then they come in and my contractions already got like worse at this point. So I wanted to wait. And then by the time we got up to the room, I was like, okay, like, I don't think I want to wait anymore. I think I want to just get it. I was already five centimeters dilated. So I get the epidural. I felt it within like 15 minutes. Well, I stopped feeling my contractions. It worked like within like 15, 20 minutes, which was great. I didn't feel any more of my contractions. I was just good. I was so tired though. So I was like laying there. My friend gets there. So I tried to take a little nap and then my family came to say hi and they came up really quick. It was like 10. I, I have no idea what time it is. I'm, I'm going to assume it's, it was like 10 at this point. I had like the shakes. Like I was like trembling like I was cold but it wasn't because I was cold and I later found out that that happens when you get the epidural sometimes so after my family leaves I'm just like hanging out we're watching like modern family and I'm just like taking like naps on and off also there was another lady on the floor who was having a baby and she was screaming and that scared me so bad I was like oh my god like I knew I had the epidural and I knew that 
it helped with my contractions, but I had no, I had no idea how it would be as far as when it came to pushing. Like I expected to feel like all this pain with pushing. So I was so scared because I'm like, oh my God, like this lady's screaming, it's gonna hurt so bad. And so that like freaked me out. After that, I was like taking naps on and off. I took a nap and then I took like kind of a good nap because I remember being really tired and then I get woken up by the midwife or the doctor. She comes in and she's like, okay, we're gonna check to see how much you're dilated. We're gonna like break your water, whatever. So she goes in to, ch to break my water and nothing came out. So I had been leaking and I didn't even know because when she went to break it, there was no fluid. So thank God I was already at the hospital. At this point, up until I got the epidural, my contractions were never consistent. They were never five to six minutes, five to seven minutes apart consistently. So honestly, I'm so thankful that I had my doctor's appointment that day because it, if I had waited until, because everybody says like, oh, don't go to the hospital until they're like five to seven minutes apart. And so if I had waited when they never even got like that, I feel like things would have gotten crazy very quickly because I'm so far from the hospital and I ended up giving birth very soon after that happened. So anyways, so she goes to break my water, nothing comes out. And then she checks to see how much I'm dilated. And she's like, okay, you're fully dilated. Um, so let's do some practice pushes. And I was like, oh my God. Like, I just thought she was coming in to check on me really quick and go back. I was so tired. Like I wanted to go back to sleep. And so she gets me in position. We start doing We start doing practice pushes and then I do like one or two, I feel like. And then she's like, okay, like let's start doing this for real. And I was like, oh my God, like it just happened so fast. I feel like I didn't even have time to process things. Oh, hold on. So then we start pushing for real. Um, so I was pushing for almost two hours and I didn't even know. I was doing all these different positions. She had Juan and Ashley hold each leg so they were like on either side of me holding my legs to help me because I couldn't feel anything like I didn't feel any contractions I didn't even feel when I was pushing like I didn't feel that ring of fire that people say I didn't feel not one thing so they needed to hold my legs to like help position me I guess I was trying to push and she was like guiding me like oh you're doing great whatever you just did like keep doing and so I was like okay so that was kind of helping me a little bit. So yeah, we would push every time I got a contraction and then I would like relax for like a minute. In that minute or so, or so when I was relaxing, I was so exhausted and so just like, I felt dead because I didn't have any food in my system literally that whole day. Um, so I was just like pushing and running on no energy. I was literally on E. I pushed for almost two hours and then she, hands me my little baby and I start crying obviously immediately. Juan's crying, everybody's crying. Juan cuts the cord and then they put her on me and then I'm just holding her for like an hour. Like the whole time that they're down there doing whatever and when the placenta comes out and all that, like I didn't see any of that. Before I started pushing, the nurse was like, do you want a mirror? And I was like, no. Like I, I personally did not want to see myself like that. Like I didn't. My best friend took a video, so I have it. I haven't even watched it yet. I'm glad she took it because eventually I do want to see. It's such a beautiful thing, but I don't know. I was like, I don't want to watch it happening. I feel like it's going to freak, I'm going to freak myself out. I'm holding the baby. We're doing skin to skin for like an hour. Um, I did get a second degree tear, so they had to stitch me up. So I was holding her that whole time and I was breastfeeding her. They like put her to feed immediately. She's here, she woke up from her nap, but now she's just chilling. And so hopefully that lasts. But so we do skin to skin for like an hour. And then after that, they take the baby to the bassinet area, like take her measurement, her weight, like all that stuff. She was seven pounds, nine ounces and she was 21 inches long. My perfect little baby. It was just so surreal. Like that moment when they hand you your baby, like obviously it's like tears of joy that are like flowing out of my face. So I'm just holding her, looking at this little peanut, this little human that literally I created. It was honestly like the best moment of my entire life. And then the nurse 
tells me that I need to get up to pee before they take me to like my other room. So the nurse and Juan are both like lifting me up to make sure that I don't like fall in case I don't feel my legs or anything. So I'm like walking slowly to the, to the bathroom and as soon as I stand up, I feel like lightheaded. They walk me to the bathroom and then I sit on the toilet and then I'm like, I feel like I'm gonna pass out. And so after that, I don't remember anything. Juan told me that I literally just like went limp, like that I was like dead weight. He tells me that the nurse was like calling for other nurses to come. And so I wake up just laying on the floor and I wake up to like all these nurses around me and they have like a little alcohol pad to my nose to like help wake me up. It was very scary. Like I've never passed out before, but you almost feel like drunk in a way. And you're just like very like loopy. And so as soon as I said, I feel like I'm gonna pass out, it like happened, like I passed out. Obviously like my blood sugar and all that was low. So I get up off the floor. Um, they put me in like this wheelchair and they wheel me to the bed. And because I hadn't eaten all day, they gave me like graham crackers and cranberry juice so I have like something in my system and I needed like my sugar to go up or something then after that they like take me in the wheelchair to our other room they take us to our room and then Juan goes to like the cafeteria and he gets uncrustables I was like that sounds good so I ate two of those just to have like food in my system and they gave me like a body armor hi baby She's smiling, she's so cute. I don't know if you can see her. I was only in the hospital for a day and a half. So we went into the hospital on the evening of the 5th. I had her one in the morning on the 6th and then we left the next day on the 7th. So yeah, I had a really positive experience. I did have a second degree tear, but I didn't have any pain. Like I didn't feel them stitching me up. I didn't feel any of that. Even afterwards, whenever I went home, like I had no pain. The only thing that hurt was when they would come in the room, like the nurses and check on me, they would like press on my stomach, basically like feeling and pressing, making sure that there was like no lumps or anything. And that would hurt a little bit. But other than that, I didn't have any other pain. Even though I teared, I didn't have pain down there, thank God. I don't know if it's because I couldn't feel it or I don't know what, but thank God I had a very like smooth and easy birth experience. Like I remember the second I got pregnant, I was so scared of giving birth. And I think a lot of people are scared of like the birth part. It's so scary and you don't know what to expect. Like every single friend that I had who has had a baby before, they would all tell me their story and every single person was different. I would do it again. Let's hope the next time I have a baby that it goes just as smooth because I was very scared um, going into it. But you don't have anything to be scared of. Um, you're at the hospital, you'll be taken care of. God forbid anything happens. So try not to worry and try not to be anxious as much as possible. I know that's like crazy to say because people would tell me that and I'm like okay I'm still scared <laughs> also I bounced on the ball a lot like before towards the end of my pregnancy and I also drank raspberry leaf tea um, I wasn't trying to induce labor at all I was trying to help soften my cervix so I don't know if that helped or if it didn't help um, I'm just thankful that my body went into labor naturally I remember checking in the hospital and they were like when's your due date and I'm like today and they were all like oh my god like that's you're the third one today that came in on their due, on their due date and I'm like just check me in like I'm having contractions like I don't have time to be talking and then for postpartum care and stuff it all depends on like if you tear if how bad your tear is and all that stuff personally for me my postpartum experience like care was was not that bad like as far as like the physical part mentally and emotionally I was kind of a mess. Um, I wasn't prepared and no one really warned me about your hormones after birth. Um, I was so emotional. Like I would just cry so easy, like at the smallest thing. Not as emotional now. I feel like that has kind of gone away. No one really prepares you for those postpartum hormones. Yeah. Me and my husband would talk about when he has to go back to work and just talking about it would make me cry like want to cry and it would make me cry. I would literally have to tell him like, I can't even have this conversation right now because I'm gonna start crying. Those first, I would say three, mainly the first three weeks, I was very emotional. It wasn't even like bad things only. It was like the thought of my husband going back to work was like making me cry. Um, I would see like a video, a reel or a TikTok of like 
other people with their babies and that would make me cry and just that's not something that I dealt with even in my pregnancy like I was never super emotional it was just something that like I didn't expect like I just was not prepared to be crying every day so that was fun I'm sorry if she's like cooing and talking she's just very vocal right now and she wants to be heard and she's smiling <laughs> yeah I'm talking about you but as far as postpartum physically, I was bleeding for, I bled for three weeks and then I stopped a little bit, but then it started again. I packed so much stuff, but because I almost, because I only stayed there for a day and a half, I didn't use hardly any of it. I used what they gave me in the hospital. Sorry, I have to take a break to feed her. So basically what I used was the Freedom on Boy shorts. I would have the pad. I use the Rayel pads. You can get them on Amazon. I'll have everything postpartum that I use um, linked down below in my Amazon storefront. So the boy shorts, the next thing was the pad on top. I used the overnight ones in the beginning and then I used the regular ones and then, then I ended up getting panty liners towards the end. It would be the shorts, pad, two of the tux cooling pads and then the Dermaplast spray. I used that for like the first week when I got home and then I stopped using the cooling pads and the spray because I don't know how effective it was for my healing. For me personally, I felt like it almost made me burn when I peed. I don't know, it was very weird. So I stopped using it and then after that, I didn't feel any more like burning or anything like that. Then it was just the Freedom Mom shorts and the pads that I was using for the whole for the whole rest of the six weeks. I just had my six week appointment two weeks ago and doctor said I'm fully healed. Everything looks great. So <clears throat> that's all that worked for me. I didn't have any pain down there. Thank God. Like I didn't, I was able to sit and everything like normal. Just felt like I was on my period for six weeks. I bled heavy for like three weeks and then I stopped. Like there was nothing and so that, then I switched to regular pads and then randomly I started bleeding super heavy one of the days around my fourth week. And so that scared me, I had to look it up. And everyone said that that's normal. Sometimes you'll stop, but, but it'll come back. That's why they tell you to wait the six weeks and why you have to be like cleared and stuff because you'll bleed like off and on. And then I really stopped at like week five. Also, as far as like my body, I gained 40 pounds pre-pregnancy. I was 120. And then before I gave birth at the day I gave birth, actually, I was like 162. And when I went back for my six week appointment, I was 141. So I lost 20 pounds and I kept 20 pounds basically, which I knew, I knew that going into it, that my body was never going to be the same. It's just, a struggle now obviously because none of my clothes fit me like I can wear leggings and stuff but like none of my jeans fit me none of my shirts fit me I didn't realize I had so many crop tops as shirts um so yeah don't those don't fit me my boobs are bigger so none of my clothes fit me so I have a closet full of stuff that I can't even wear so that kind of sucks but I have some extra loose skin around my stomach but I don't have any stretch marks thank god um, which is whatever if I had them, it'd be fine. Like I expected to get some I use like the belly oils and the belly uh, Lotion and stuff every day. So I don't know if that helped or not But I just have to basically tell myself that I grew a whole human and I have to Be nice to myself because we can be like our own worst critics. I don't care that much about the body part It's just it is what it is Expect your body to change because your whole body is going to change. I have a little bit of motivation to start working out. Maybe I want to do like home workouts or something just so I can feel better about myself because I'm home every day. Like I don't do my makeup. I did my makeup today and I put myself together just so I can like feel good. The days get long when you're just like home. So it can be easy to lose yourself. But yeah, all that postpartum stuff doesn't really matter to me. I'm not like losing sleep over it. Like I knew my body was going to change. It's just an excuse to get new clothes now. So that's fun. But honestly, I would do it all over again. My little baby is so cute and so perfect and I wouldn't change anything for the world. So I'm thankful that 
I had such a smooth pregnancy and a smooth birth and delivery. Like that's all I could have ever wanted. But that's gonna be it for this video for my birth experience and all things postpartum. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I might have missed a couple things, but thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see more videos, leave me some ideas in the comments. Subscribe and I will see you soon.